Hello students. In this video we're going to solve the wave equation using separation of variables. I'm not going to go into the physical interpretation of this equation. Uh, instead I'm just going to um, go through the procedure of separation of variables in this instance given these um, homogeneous boundary conditions and these deriv uh, initial conditions. Um, an initial condition here and a derivative initial condition here and then this um, PDE which has two um, time derivatives balanced by two spatial derivatives. Um, after we solve the uh, equation, um, we'll consider in subsequent problems and videos um, physical interpretations of this um, initial boundary value problem. All right, so let's uh, go through separation of variables. Okay, so we start with the standard procedure. We let u be a separable equation here. Um, it's a function of x multiplied by a function of t, and then we plug it into the PDE, and we get um, x double dot equals a squared x double prime t and um, then we um, separate variables and we get the separation constant minus mu squared um, just as we did before in the uh, heat equation and this leads to two ODEs um, one in time and one in space now I switched from double dot notation to double prime notation you'll see that in a lot of textbooks so um, I'm just sticking with that convention and um, so now we're going to solve these ODEs. I'll solve the spatial one first um, with the boundary conditions of u0 and u of 1 equaling 0. That means that the spatial part is going to be a zero boundary conditions. And <clears throat> as you recall from solving these problems in the past, um, this leads to a sine um, solution. The, um, the coefficient, the cosine, of course, is going to be 0 from this uh, x of 0 term. And then uh, plugging in 1 and getting 0 means that um, we, we have uh, multiples of pi for the sine term. Now, <clears throat> given that, um, this means that the mu squared um, is uh, equal to, or the mu is equal to n pi. So now that I have that mu is equal to m, n is a Nancy pi, um, I'm just going to plug that into this second equation here. And um, the temporal equation and I'm going to solve this temporal equation but of course this is just um, uh, sum of cosines and sines uh, using the superposition principle and uh, now that I have um, my temporal solution and my spatial solution I'm going to multiply them together and then add up all the subsequent uh, terms in terms of n and uh, now I'm going to impose the initial conditions so the first initial condition um, at t equals 0. Um, I uh, let t be 0. That means that I'm just left with an a n and this term here with the b n is 0. <coughs> and I set that equal to f of x. And then the second initial condition, which is a derivative condition, which means um, I take the derivative of the cosine term here and I get a sine. So when I plug in 0, I get 0. And here an n pi a pops out right here. And I'm left with a cosine term here is after I take the derivative. And when I plug in 1, um, of course, I get um, um, just a uh, bn. And um, so now I just set that equal to um, g of x. And um, I'm now, oh, I plug in, I'm sorry, I plug in 0 for t. And and, uh, and uh, the cosine of zero, of course, is one, and I'm left with a bn. I said one because I was looking at the uh, boundary condition. I apologize. Um, okay, so um, now that I have that this um, derivative initial condition is equal to g of x, I um, now proceed to um, expand f in terms of a sine series and g in terms of a sine series. So using the orthogonality conditions to solve for a n, that means I multiply by sines and cosines, and I integrate from uh, zero to one. And I multiply by sines and cosines in this term, and I integrate from 0 to 1. And the only thing that survives are the common <coughs> sine terms. So I'm left with a n equaling this um, integral. That's how I get that coefficient. So that's my Fourier coefficient for a n. And here's my Fourier coefficient for b n, where I divided by the n pi a. I'll denote those by f superscript n and g superscript n. And now I can just write the final solution. And I split it, um, instead of uh, writing it this way with my ANs and BNs, um, I can actually split the sum in two. So I have um, a cosine part and a sine part. And uh, 
we'll see in subsequent videos, um, this will actually represent a, um, a wave traveling. Um, uh, this actually will represent a, a, a standing wave, um, a wave that oscillates um, up and down um, over a, a domain. Um, but right now, I'll just <clears throat> say that this is the solution to our PDE and, um, and to our initial boundary value problem. All right, good luck.